fantastic end to his matchup. And he'll be absolutely sick with that. He talks a lot about the breaks in Jack's matchup with Lewis and talk about how good a player Jack Whelan is. You can't afford to give him freebies and Phil knew as soon as he hit that that he was straight in off. And sometimes you get kicked in off and it can be unlucky. That is pure user error and Phil will be, I mean, pretty devastated with himself to, to have flown straight in off there, especially as he's trying to seek to ride the crest of a wave. Yeah, he wanted to keep that momentum going. He's just done essentially five visits to the table, five frames, and now he's going to have to sit in his chair. We often talk about being able to go straight back out there and do it again. Depends on the player, depends on the moment and how it pans out. But for Phil Parkin, it's a big win he's just had, a big moment for him. It's having to sort of calm yourself down and go again. And we won't know how he's feeling right now about that because all he can do is sit in his chair and watch on. This isn't easy though for Jack Whelan. Eight ball in a really awkward spot. And the yellows aren't too bad. Interested to know what he's going to do with the eight ball. A little cannon off the, the yellow inside it to try and just pop it over the middle. It's not for a few shots time though. Does he do it off the, potentially off the final shot as well, which is a risk? Or does he leave the yellow in the middle of the table when he's doing it? And that also a risk of not landing nicely on it. Or do you just take it clean, leave the eight ball where it is and back yourself to, to pot it down the cushion, but it is in a very awkward spot. Well, Jack generally will back his potting. And that's the plan. Has the angle he wants if he wants to just pop the eight ball over the middle, but it compromises the position on the yellow. That's what he's tried to do. Has he done it enough? Probably. It's very, very tight on that jaw. And it is awkward. Well, the, the fact that it's actually frozen to the rail is what's going to cause him the issue. If it's a millimetre off, he can probably get him behind it. But frozen to the rail is a problem because you can't turn it around the corner. Yeah, and it's a tricky little positional shot with it as well to get right behind this. Great part. How's your cue ball? I mean... Pretty exceptional, if we're honest. Yeah, that's a top draw shot. Needs another, because this is awkward queuing, actually, over the red. This from this angle looks really easy. I promise you it's not. Played it well. What an out. Fantastic from Jack Whelan. All done at a very high level. I thought it was a really superb performance. Up until... What a break that is. But up until about the final 10 minutes of that match, the first half an hour, he's 5-2 up. He's played pretty much flawlessly against Lewis Roberts. And he's, I mean, he's made one mistake in the match, really, with that, with that really poor positional shot on, the, on one of his final, final visits. But other than that, he was almost flawless. He was, and yeah, it wasn't always, you know, from a big break, break in clearance. It was having to earn a right through tactical play, but... You know, it wasn't prolonged tactical play. It was just clever, simple, and, and he sort of won two frames via that method. I thought it was a fantastic match. Really enjoyed his match with Lewis Roberts. I enjoyed both the matches this morning. They both been fantastic. And we could be in for another here. What a shot. Going the long way around on yellows here is Jack Whelan. Obviously, you saw it in the last replay, he took a good long look at that red. Didn't really fancy it, I don't think. And landing where he did on that yellow, back to his long pot, and made it. Didn't That's want not the, the best shot he's ever played, though. It, it, it's fine, though. He's OK, actually. It could have gone a lot worse than that when he got the cannon. He's actually got a nice angle on this one to just put the cue ball in between the two on the left-hand side. Now he can come down the table. One up the table connects to the one, other one at the top, which in turn connects and works its way back on back round. So he's still in very good shape here. Oh, 
always a good sign of a player in control of their patterns when their last three or four shots are all connections where it's drop-ins simple shots exactly what he's got here just has to roll this through same with the next one eight ball waiting well, he's taking an extra second here but this looks absolutely perfect just has to roll through two or three inches I think he's slightly off straight yeah he just, just slightly off straight the wrong way so it's gone a little bit close to the top cushion. I think that's what he was analysing. I think he straightened the angle up actually with that pot pinch the pocket a touch. Yeah, but it does mean he's got a little bit more angle on this than maybe he needs. Yeah, he's rolled. He's gone a roll further than he wanted. He he was worried of coming up short and went long. Oh. It's just, it's just very good. Very, very good from Jack Whelan. Super start. And he hits this break poor. That wasn't a very good break. The first break was poor with the cue ball. This one's poor as well. So the two shots we've seen from Phil not being good here. He hasn't got going yet at all. Yeah, he will not be chuffed with that. chance for three off the break on the on the bounce I think Jack will be disappointed with the shot there he was trying to slide across the face of that yellow and take it into the same pocket not go into it it's still not a major problem but a ball that does need to be played on to right centre bottom left hand corner the two options for it well, that's for later on in the visit. Might be for now if it keeps going. I'm not sure if that was the plan or not, but I'm sure he would have taken it if that cue ball had rolled two more rolls. <coughs> I think he's straight enough come straight back now for it no, just more angle take the right hand one it might be straight on the left hand one to be able to come back for it straight away Perfect for Jack Whelan on the trickiest ball of the three. Eight ball still a little bit tricky, if truth be told. It looks easier than it is. Doesn't go bottom right hand corner or right centre. So may not get right behind the eight ball. And this is where Phil Parkin really has to be very, very good because he had a flawless end to his first match. Looks box office and when that's how it finishes, you almost, all you want is just a chance to get going in the second match, to keep that momentum, to ride that wave as we talked about. And all he's done so far is hit two bad breaks and he hasn't been able to settle and he's bang under the gun here there's a very, very good chance that the next time he comes to the table, he may well be 4-0 down. And this requires excellent mental strength and superpowers of recovery. Jack Whelan for 3-0. Never in doubt. It's very impressive what Jack Whelan's just done. It's one thing to get the opportunities, but... Any time you can win a title amongst these professionals, it is... Worth its weight in gold. And when it's running for you, it's running for you. Jack Whelan did not hit that break well. Jawed the cue ball. He's made two balls down the bottom end. 
I mean, you can see Phil Parkin's reaction in the top right of your picture. He knew that was close. He just wants to get into the match. He can't, he can't, <laughs> he can't get a go. Yeah, that is a reaction we've seen plenty of times before. Ronan McCarthy and our fan dad watching on. We'll see Ronan McCarthy a little bit later. He's the first match of our evening session tonight. Sean Storey faces him in the first quarter final. We'll then have Mark Fleming against Jake McCartney. That's, uh, it's a, that'll do nicely for Jack Whelan. Yeah, it's a brilliant shot. I was looking at the layout thinking, oh, this is awkward. Yellows are, are not bad, but one bad one. And Reds have looked like three bad ones at the top there. But playing that one, it looks like he got a little bit lucky because it sort of went in off the yellow. He absolutely didn't. He was playing it off the yellow in exactly the way that it panned out to open up that pocket for the other two Reds. May not have played the cannon at the bottom end of the table exactly as it's come out, but he will take it. And what looked a tricky layout on Reds initially now looks absolutely wide open and all but guaranteed for 4 0. Although I spoke too soon, that's a loose one from Jack. Worst shot he's played in a match so far. Yeah, he still should be able to recover. He can take Red to the top right. Just has to leave himself a shade low. Yeah, just where he's putting his cue now. And then he can pop the one, top one of the two together and just screw into the yellow. The other one then goes. But he's caused himself a problem. He's going to have to work himself out of it. Hampered queuing, but he's got a window if he wants to roll it on and off. Four frames, four clearances, all Jack Whelan's way. He did it with help against Arfan, and he did it all on his own against Aaron. And that is dry. It's tough out there for Phil Parkin. He's trying so hard mentally to stay positive and, and be prepared and be ready, and, and I actually believe he will be. It's just how much damage is going to be done when he finally gets to the table. Jack Whelan is one of the best players in the world. He's one of the best front runners in the world. He's now 4 0 in front and has a wide open chance. Well, it's wide open now because he had one bad ball on the table for 5 0 and his break next. It's just so tough if you put yourself in Phil Parkin's position here. Looks like the eight ball goes past the red to bottom left. I was thinking that does he need to leave the yellow over the bottom right to connect to the eight ball into the middle, but if the eight ball comfortably goes bottom left, he doesn't need to. So he can kind of pick his route. See that clearly on the overhead. Could have gone other ways anyway. It's so many different options when they're laid out like this. Hasn't actually landed particularly nicely here. And because he didn't land nicely on the previous one, hasn't landed nicely on this one. Coming across the line, his margin of error on that shot to be on this yellow to the left centre nicely was very, very small. And he hasn't landed on it, so backup plan in operation. perfect shape he 
he's not perfect on this, but he can get away with just dropping this in. Doesn't have to do a huge amount. And then just stops it dead. Well, this is a little bit of a clinic from Jack Whelan. Cue ball close once again, but balls flying in. And as soon as you hear those balls rattling in from Phil Parkin's perspective, you fear the worst once again. Oh, Phil's reaction. He knows that was close. He is just hoping for anything. He wants to be allowed into the match. They have come out messy, though. Could be some hope here for Phil to get to the table. Eight ball's gone awkward. Half opened up two yellows, but still not great here. By far and away his hardest opportunity of the six he's had. And yet this is the sort of opportunity that when you've already taken out, you know, so many in a row, you you play in this with a little bit less pressure. Not sure Jack will be totally, you know, arm free flowing. He will always want to seal the deal and make sure of you know, make sure of sure, but you'd rather be taking this one at 5 0 up than with the match being tight. <coughs> yeah, that's very true. He keeps looking at this yellow at the top of the braking area. I assume it must go through the gap. The fact he keeps looking at it so much, maybe it's a little bit tight, but he also has to have the absolute pinpoint angle to be able to play on the other yellow with then an angle to be able to get out. Remembering he's a good angle in his last ball, then to get on the eight ball. This is there's still loads of work here. trouble now. Phil Parkin can start to think he'll get to the table now. Yeah, how on earth do you get out from here? I wonder if he if he just dies this in, has he got the potential to cut this yellow back from the top of the table? Is that what he's looking at now? Yeah, quite possibly. Maybe look at yellow off red if he feels he can control himself onto the eight ball, but both, you know, really long odd shots. has to kill this in as well he couldn't if he pots that center pocket the cue ball floats across too far he has to sort of kill it in with a, a bit of side yeah and use all the pocket by <coughs> trying to glide it in with the rail as well so it forces the first miss of the match and with 21 minutes left just short of the halfway point and five nil down phil parkin plays his first shot and he makes his first red now then phil yeah welcome to the match That's a beautiful shot. That right. really is. Lovely cannon. Well, there we get a glimpse of Dave McNamara. He's coming up in our next match, actually. He takes on Chris Mellon in the first match of Group H. Let's take a look at that group in a little bit for you. Still going to be a tricky eight ball coming up for Phil Park. And if he leaves the one over the top pocket, he could get tempted into sort of playing into the eight ball. But we know how often that can go wrong. No future in playing into it now. Mm, 
So he could load this up with left-hand side and play into it, but I think he should just try and drift past it and take the eight ball in the same pocket. He has played into it, and it's come out okay. He'll take that. Yeah, great shot. Always feel that's a risk, but it's a risk that's paid off for him. Phil Parkin gets his first frame on the board, and goodness me, will he feel a little bit better about things. Well, you can't hit them better. You can't hit them much better than that, Phil. It's just a, a big, big difference in, in power between the two of them. It's noticeable. And these have come out really well. It's sort of a very soft explosion. They've all kind of gone to a nice even sort of split across the table. Phil in this match has been drier than the Sahara. It's been tough. If we're being ultra critical, he hit his first two breaks pretty poorly. The first one went straight in off, the second one he hit really badly and he showed us that in his reaction. But the last two he's hit well, but just there's not had any drop in for him. Not as, like I say, it's just a big noticeable difference in power between the two players on the on the break, but then there is with Jack Whelan against a lot of players. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a fair comment. Well, if Phil's been drier than the Sahara, Jack Wooden is cooking up a sandstorm. 5-1 up. 18 minutes left. And he is flying. Yeah. He really is. He gives off great body language around the table. It's like he owns it out there. Leaving one over left centre, gives him options. Straight, takes it bottom right, see that there? Angle, can play right centre, left centre, all the options in the world, but looks simple enough. Drop this in, bottom right. Six one. And there's the difference in the power. We, we talk about the power, and it, it's the reason being both Jack's break and Phil's break were hit with the same sort of quality of contact, and no balls dropped in initially. Whereas Jack had the extra power for balls to fly around for secondary um, balls to drop in. And that's where he gets the, you know, he has much more consistency on his break for that reason. Yeah, calls his extension, Jack Whelan, and he he looks like he's going to bully Phil Parkin out the tournament here. This is a great chance to elbow him aside and take his place in the quarterfinal. It's going to be a tough one for Phil Parkin to take initially, but when he analyzes his first performance as an ultimate pool professional, he's had two very, very big scalps, taking down a world champion, and he started the season you know, in, in decent fashion here. It's going to hurt, obviously, not getting an opportunity to essentially feel like he's even involved in a match here, but he, he should be able to take the positives from his first, first crack at it. I think he has to. I mean, he's, he's beaten two very, very good players just to get to, to this stage. He beat Greg Batten in the qualifiers, 10 frames to seven. Greg, well up in the ranking the last couple of years. Sean Chipperfield in his first match of the day. I, he's, he's just run into a steam train here and he hasn't had the opportunities to, to sort of hold him off. If you are going to beat a player playing as well as Jack Whelan, you have to have the chances to do so, and you can't manufacture them. They've just got to present themselves. So Phil can for sure hold his head up high. This scoreline looks brutal, but he is, he's done nothing wrong. One chance, what, and he's taken it. 
This is the final hope for him, though. Awkward queuing makes this just a tricky enough shot that could go wrong. But of course, it doesn't. Brilliant from Jack Whelan. Too good. World class from the wonder. Smile between the two players and shake of hands. Phil Parkin will be bitterly disappointed. But as we mentioned, he can hold his head high with his performance there in this morning's group in the Ultimate Pool Pro Cup. Precious few mistakes from Phil. That was one of them. But he got one visit in open table, took his chance. The only issue is Jack Whelan took every single one of his as well. Relentless from the wonder. He's through to the Ultimate Pool Pro Cup quarterfinals.